Welcome to iLecture Online. For those who watched the previous video and didn't like the graphical method because it looked so messy, and yes, it is kind of complicated to get through that, we can do it another method. We can do the very same problem using calculus, so let's try that. Again, the problem reads as follows. An object is dropped from a certain height, let's call it h. The question is, what is h? I don't have a question mark, do I? No, I'll put a question mark in there. It says, what is h if the object drops two-thirds of the total height during the final one second? Okay, so graphically, this is what happens. We're up on top of a building. We don't know how high the building is. We drop an object. It falls down to the ground. And in one second, or it falls two-thirds of the total distance in the last one second of its path. So what is the height from which the object was dropped? And the way we can do that is as follows. So let me show you. We're going to, again, graph a velocity versus time graph. So we have velocity on the vertical axis, time on the horizontal axis, and the graph will look like this if we use the assumption that all the numbers are positive. In other words, it's falling down. We have a positive velocity downward. G, the acceleration due to gravity, is a positive 9.8 meters per second squared. It just makes the graph a little easier to draw. So that will be the graph that we have. We don't know what the velocity will be when it finally reaches the ground. And we don't need to know that. We do, don't know the total time, but we do know that in the last one second of its path, the last one second, time is in seconds, we drop, we drop two-thirds of the total distance. Remember that the area underneath a velocity versus time graph represents the distance traveled. So let's call this, this distance A2, and let's call this distance, distance A1. So we know that A2 must be equal to two-thirds the total distance, which is the sum of A1 plus A2. So the distance fallen in the last one second called A2, which is the area underneath the graph here, is two-thirds the total distance, which is the sum of A1 plus A2. All right, let's work that one out a little bit. First, multiply everything by 3. We get 3A2 is equal to 2A1 plus 2A2. Subtract 2A2 from both sides, so it gives us A2 is equal to 2 times A1 which means that the area underneath the curve right here, A2, is twice the area underneath the curve there. Now, it may not look that visually because we don't know the total time. This here, let's call this time T. And so the total time would be T plus 1. Now, the area underneath the curve for A1 can be done as follows. We could say that A1 is equal to the integral of this area right here. So, the integral of the velocity versus time curve. Now this velocity curve, v, is equal to v sub naught plus a times t. And since v sub naught is equal to zero, we can say that v is equal to a times t. And so, we're going to integrate the velocity times dt, or we're going to integrate velocity, which is the acceleration, which of course is going to be g times t, or 9.8 times t. So this is 9.8 t dt, and we're going to integrate from 0 to t. From 0 to t. So this is equal to 9.8 t squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to t. And so we know that a1 is equal to, when we plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. When we plug in the upper limit, we'll get t squared. So 4.9 times t squared. So that is the distance a1. That is the distance we fall until we reach the final one second of the path. We're going to do the same for a2. So a2 can be found by integrating velocity times dt. So we're going to integrate this function from here to here. The function is still v sub naught plus a t, so that's still going to be 9.8 t times dt, and we're going to integrate from t to t plus 1. t plus 1 is the total time, t is the beginning of this time interval. So this is also going to be 9.8 t squared over 2, evaluated from t to t plus 1. 
or this is 4.9 t squared evaluated from t to t plus 1. All right, what does that look like? Well, we have a 2 is equal to 4.9 times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get t plus 1 squared, and when we plug in the lower limit, we simply get t squared. So, this is equal to 4.9 times, this is t squared plus 2t plus 1 minus t squared. The t squares cancel out, and we're left with a 2 is equal to 4.9 times 2t, which is 9.8t plus 4.9. And so this is the value for A2. Now, we can use this equation right here to solve for T. We're told that A2 is twice A1. So A2 is twice A1, so let's plug that in here. A2 is equal to 9.8T plus 4.9 and that's going to be equal to 2 times a1, and a1 is 4.9t squared. In other words, whoop, I should put an arrow there. Okay, so this is a2 equals twice a1, and I'm writing everything as a quadratic equation, I get 0 is equal to 9.8t squared minus 9.8t minus 4.9, and if I divide everything by 9.8, I get 0 is equal to t squared minus t minus 0 0.5. Let's see if I get all that correct. Yes. All right. So there is my quadratic equation, which I can solve for t. And of course, once I know t, the total time, then I can find out the height. So solving this quadratic equation, I can say that t is equal to negative b, which is 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, but since c is negative, that's a plus, that would be 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a, which is 2. Now notice that this is 2 plus 1 is 3, so this would be equal to 1 plus the square root of 3 divided by 2. I don't need the negative sign because I cannot have negative t. Using, an, using a calculator, we get 3, take the square root, plus 1, divided by 2 equals, I get 1.366 for the time. So t is equal to 1.366, so t total, which is equal to t plus 1, is equal to 1.366 plus 1, or 2.366 seconds. And of course, this is seconds. So... The total time for the object to reach the ground is 2.366 seconds. Which means I can now use my equation that y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times t plus one half t squared, or one half g t squared, sorry, g t squared. I don't have, well, let's see here. Let me take that back. Um, yeah, starting from the top, if this is y initial equals 0 going downward, so I'll use the same premise again, going downward, and this is 0, and this is 0, I can say that the total y, which is h, I can just call it h, is equal to 1 half g, which is now going to be positive, because I have a positive negative direction, times t squared, and t, of course, is 2.366 quantity squared, so h is equal to... And we need a drum roll here. We're going to add one to that. We're going to square that number and times 4.9, which is half 9.8. So we get a value of 27.43 meters, which, by the way, is the exact same value that we had on the previous video. So here, instead of using the graphical method, we use the integration method, knowing that the area underneath the curve can be obtained by integrating the velocity curve, in this case velocity versus time. Velocity in this case is going to be 8 times t, and a will be 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. So using that 
And then the relationship between A2 and A1, based upon what they gave us. And then we derive the time. Once we have the time, we can derive the height. And that is how it's done using calculus. Is that H or 2 thirds H? That is H, not 2 thirds H. So are we finding H or 2 thirds H? No, we're finding what is H if the object drops 2 thirds of its height. <laughs> it's still kind of messy. I wonder if we could do it algebraically. Yeah, we'll try that. Okay, I'll take a look and see if we can do this algebraically as well using the equation of kinematics.